Today's breaking news is that Intel has a new CEO. What's your minimum specification? Now, current Intel CEO Bob Swan, I literally interviewed him a few days ago over at Anantech. You can read the interview there. I'll do a video on it soon. But this is more pressing because Intel has basically gone and told him to go away and interviewed this new guy, Pat Gelsinger. Now, why is he the right fit for Intel CEO? He used to be at Intel. He was hired by Intel when he was 18 and spent 30 years there. He is a CPU microarchitect by trade. He designed the AT486. And so through his 30 years at Intel, he worked his way up to Chief Technology Officer. There, he oversaw teams covering 14 generations of Core and Xeon products, as well as, you know, things like Itanium and all sorts of other stuff. Bob Swan, Intel's current CEO, stays in a role until February 15th. In that time, he will take his lead at the end of year financial call on January 21st, where he's set to outline Intel's plans as it comes to the future of manufacturing and engineering. What Pat is going to have to do, Pat Gelsinger as he comes in, is, is also decide where that engineering will go. Will Intel outsource to foundries? How will it develop its current process? When we spoke to Bob, um, he said that Intel could sub-license uh, foundry technology from either TSMC or Samsung for its own manufacturing facilities. They would, ex they could, and probably will expand into using third-party foundry for some of its products. There's already rumors that the next generation uh, DG2 product will be on TSMC 7 nanometer, though that's not confirmed at this point. Outgoing Bob has said what he's tried to do is change the culture of Intel. Now Bob is a finance guy, formerly chief financial officer. He's not an engineer, and that's been the main criticism leveled against him. How can you be an engineer? How can you be a non-engineer at the top of an engineering company? So this is what Pat will come in. Pat will continue that refocus of uh, engineering. One of the things Bob said is it was important to make sure that in the room when these engineering decisions were made, they had voices from all over the company of many engineers and not just one. So Pat's likely to continue that transformation into an engineering focused company. Though that being said, any changes that Pat instigates on a product level, we probably won't see for three to five years at least, because these are the sorts of roadmaps that companies like Intel uh, work to. Some analysts have been saying that, you know, the next three years are kind of baked in for Intel. Anything Pat does uh, product wise won't have that effect until three plus years. Um, and, you know, this is one of the biggest job in semiconductors, CEO of Intel. Interesting, though, when Bob took the job over in 2018, he was interim for about six months before being made uh, full time CEO. He, Bob, Bob at the time turned around and said, I don't want the job. Then he took the job. Pat was offered the job, as far as we know, back in 2018 and took it and decided not to take it. Here he is taking the job. So what I want to ask Pat really is what's changed in the last couple of years that has made you want to take this job at CEO at Intel? I mean, you've got a lifetime, you've got 33 decades at Intel experience already. As far as I know, he already has a culture of personality kind of inside Intel. He's known as the engineer's engineer, which sounds like the right fit for a company like Intel. But something has to have changed in the last couple of years. It can't be the money. This guy has made millions uh, as CEO of VMware and formerly COO of uh, EMC. During his tenure at VMware, he's tripled the company's revenue in the last eight years. So there will be targets put on Pat for revenue generation, for writing the ship, as it were, making sure that Intel re-emerges as a technology leader, not only in processors, but all these other areas that Intel plays in like GPU, like data center, like networking, like 5G infrastructure, like IoT, like things like Mobileye. Pat will be tasked in not only building revenue and building value, but making sure that the ship is righted in light of competition. I interviewed Bob Swan, like I said, a few days ago. Uh, very enlightening, a video up on that soon. But yeah, among those things is rebuilding the culture. Bob acknowledged that technology is at the forefront of Intel and it matters more than financial. And the fact that they're hiring Pat so soon after that interview probably you know, reinforces the fact that, yes, technology is the key part of Intel. So interesting, interesting set of circumstances happening right in the middle of CES. Um, the fact that Pat had a message to employees that also went out as a press release, but went out kind of like an hour after the official press release of the CEO change means that this is a very fluid situation going on today. I've reached out to friends like Patrick Kennedy at Server Home to hear their thoughts on exactly uh, what this means for Intel. Hey Ian, I think that this news is great for both Intel and for Pat. 
Intel is transitioning from a period where it had basically not a lot of competition, both on the desktop and on the server side. Now it's facing competition for both AMD as well as ARM competitors on both fronts. As a result, Intel is going outside of its traditional x86, just kind of standard processors and looking at, you know, what are the other areas that it can go and other IP that it can build and bring to products so that way it can serve its customers better. What that practically means is that by moving outside of the traditional compute space, it's expanding its TAM to new market segments, while at the same time exposing it to new competitors. I think those are very similar challenges to what Pat has faced at VMware. VMware had basically a monopoly on virtualization in its early days, and it was the go-to option. But nowadays, most virtualization is done by major public cloud providers. And so VMware has had to reinvent itself. It's had to create products such as vSAN for storage, NSX for its networking. It's also deploying new solutions for multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, and Kubernetes. In each of those product segments, Pat and his team at VMware have had to launch products into competitive environments and have seen their TAM increase as a result. So even though VMware is not necessarily the biggest virtualization player at this point, I think that's mostly open source virtualization based on what the cloud guys use, but even against losing share in its traditional market, what it has done is been able to expand its TAM and maintain revenue growth because of that. And taking a step back, Intel's the kind of company and in the type of market where you can't really have an outside just general purpose CEO that just has good business acumen. You really need somebody that's steeped in the technology. And I think that Pat with his history at Intel, then EMC and VMware, both has the technical knowledge and the background to be seen more as a kind of, you know, insider that had left for a while and is coming back at Intel. He's bringing a diversity of experiences by having left the mothership and coming back. Also at VMware, where Pat had to go sell and work with a whole bunch of customers and partners that are the same folks that Intel works on, mostly on the data center side, but also with VMware's desktop virtualization solutions and client management solutions also on the client side as well. Intel has certainly expanded since he was last at Intel, but at the same time, Pat has stayed relevant in the customer and partner base that Intel has. Now, aside from having an absolutely awesome name, I think that it's a great story for Pat personally, because this is an engineer who started his career at Intel, was there for three decades, then you know left and is getting to go take over the helm as CEO. There had to be a point in those 30 years that Pat was originally at Intel that he thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I was CEO of this place. So I think on a personal level, it's great to see the fact that he's able to kind of make that dream become a reality. So personally, I think this is a good move. Um, I really want to hear what Pat has to say about what he's doing, what he's planning to do with Intel. Um, what are your thoughts? What does this mean for Intel? Are you still, still team Intel? What are we going to see in the future? What do you want to see in the future? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe when you do this to the channel. It really helps. Uh, thanks to all the Patreon supporters. And I must ask Pat, what is his minimum specification?